Dear students, welcome you all. Today I am going to discuss vegetative propagation, natural means and methods. Vegetative propagation is the formation of new individuals from any vegetative part of the plant including stem, root or leaf. The structural unit that is employed in place of seed is called as propagule. Vegetative propagation can be natural or artificial. Artificial methods of vegetative reproduction can be achieved with different methods. The first method is the bud graft, in which a stem piece containing bud is inserted into a slot cut in a root stock. The second method is the tissue culture technology, in which the single plant cell can be induced to divide. With the division of the cells, they grow and make a complete plant. Third method is the cutting, in which Plants are vegetated by putting the cut end of a shoot into water or moist soil. When they are provided with suitable conditions, the roots grow from the base of the stem into the soil, and the stem and leaves also appear. Vegetative reproduction by natural methods is very common among seed plants. Vegetative organs such as roots, stems, and leaves bearing adventitious buds bring about the formation of new plants. Artificial methods of vegetative propagation. Various methods of vegetative propagation have been developed by plant growers and horticulturists for commercial production of crops. These are called as artificial methods of vegetative propagation which include stem cuttings. In stem cuttings, numerous plant species are propagated by stem cuttings. Most of them can be taken throughout summer and fall. But stem cuttings of some woody plants root better if taken in fall or in dormant season. Now leaf cuttings. Leaf cuttings as far as artificial method of propagation is concerned, many plants can be artificially cloned by such leaf cuttings. Species that work well including those of Bryophyllum, Crassula, Astra. In this process a leaf is removed from the donor plant and placed in moist soil or in water and kept in the light which later develops plantlets on the margins. Grafting In grafting, two plants are used to develop a new plant with combined traits from two different parent plants. Here the scion and stalk are used. Scion is the above ground part of the plant while the stalk is the rooted part of the second plant. The scion is inserted into a cleft made in the stalk which later develops into a new complete plant. Another method which is called as layering. In layering, a shoot of a parent plant is bent until it can be covered by soil. The tip of the shoot remains above ground which results the formation of new roots and eventually a new plant. These plants are then separated. Tissue culture technology. To make thousands of individuals from one clone, special method is used called as plant tissue culture or micropropagation. This micropropagation, which is also called as in vitro clone propagation, is the multiplication of genetically identical individuals by asexual reproduction. Now, natural methods of vegetative propagation. Natural methods of vegetative propagation can be achieved through organs like root, stem and leaves bearing adventitious buds described as number first stem. Aerial weak stems including runners, stolons, etc. when they touch the ground give off adventitious roots. Thereafter, if connection breaks from the parent plant, the portion with the newly formed roots develops into an independent plant. Modified stems which help in propagation can be classified into various categories that is underground stem, sub aerial stem and aerial stem. Now first we will discuss underground stem. The part of the stem that is underground in some plants serves two functions. It tides over unfavorable conditions by storing food and becoming dormant and then germinating with the help of auxiliary buds when there are favorable conditions. The underground stems may be variously modified into the various kinds, for example, runners. 
The runner is actually a slender prostate branch with short and long internodes. It rises from the base of the plant and creeps on the ground, produces roots and grows into a new plant. Money runners are produced from a mother plant. They spread on the ground on all sides. On getting detached from the parent plant, the shoot develops as independent plant. The runner is meant for vegetative propagation and the examples include Cynodon, Strawberry, Astra. Tubers. Tuber is a swollen apical part of an underground stem, branch and bears number of nodes or eyes. Each eye bear one or many buds. New plants are produced from the buds present on the eyes, for example, potato. Rhizomes. Rhizomes are elongated, swollen and branched stems. The scaly leaves are bigger. Rhizomes also give rise to new plants from the auxiliary buds, for example, ginger and turmeric. Bulb. A bulb contains an underground stem. Leaves are attached to the stem. These leaves contain much stored food. At the center of the bulb is an apical bud. Also attached are lateral buds. The apical bud produces leaves and a flower, while the lateral buds produce new shoots. As the plant grows and develops, it forms a new bulb underground, for example, onion. Corm. There are a number of species which multiply vegetatively with the help of combs. The comb is actually essentially a basal plate without the leaf base. The roots still originate around the edge of the disc-like comb and on the convex, that is, lower surface. The apical and axillary buds of the shoot system originate on the almost concave, that is, upper surface. Each of these forms a new comb for the next year. Again, this proliferation of combs on the upper surface of the original comb results in clump or combs competing with each other. So, if the combs stop flowering after a few years, it can be dig up in the late summer and spread out for the next year. Suckers The roots of most plants produce cytokinins. As these accumulate in the roots, it induces shoot formation. Near the base of the shrub, a new shoot begins to grow, which is called as root sprout or sucker. Sucker of mint and chrysanthemum arise from the base of the erect shoot, grows horizontally in the soil and then come out from the new aerial shoots. These shoots become independent plants when suckers break away from the parent plants. Aerial stems Aerial modified stems of cacti, for example, develops new plants when stem segments fall on the ground and act a means of vegetative propagation. Now, sub-aerial stems. Aerial stems are found in many herbaceous plants with a thin, delicate and weak stem. In such plants, a part of the stem lives underground, whereas remaining part of the stem is aerial. These plants bear adventitious roots and aerial branches at nodes. Such plants propagate quickly with the help of fragments of spatial branches. Sub-aerial modified stems are of two types, that is, stolon and offset. Stolons. These develop from underground stems. They grow horizontally outwards and bear nodes and internodes. They resemble the runner except that they are produced just below the surface of the soil, and the examples include strawberry, valsneria. Offsets. These are also known as condensate runners. These originate as short, more or less thickened horizontal branches in the axil of the lower leaves of the main shoots. Unlike a runner, an offset produces a tuft of leaves above and cluster of roots below. On breaking off from the parent plant, each branch forms an independent plant, for example, Pistia. Roots New plants can grow out of swollen, modified roots called as tubers. 
buds develop at the base of stem and then grow into new plants. The roots of some plants develop adventitious buds on them, for example, shisham or dalbergia, gava, etc. Some tuberous adventitious roots besides possessing adventitious bud also contain sufficient quantities of food, for example, dahlia and sweet potato. These buds sprout under suitable conditions. These sprouts may be spread and planted. In shisham, young fast-growing shoots arise from the roots around the cut stems of trees. In sweet potato, the roots grow from the nodes of running stem and they are irregularly swollen due to the storage of food. Hence, they are called as tuberous roots. They are called as simple tuberous roots because they arise singly, that means one at each node and not in clusters. They even give rise to adventitious buds when detached, can give rise to new plants, thus performing the function of vegetative propagation. Leaves Leaves of some plants grow into a new plant if they become detached from the parent plant. Other plants grow small plants called plantlets on the edge of their leaves. In some plants, adventitious buds are developed on their leaves, for example, bryophyllum, begonia, streptocarpus, calanjoy, and centapolia. In bryophyllum, notched margins of succulent leaves bear adventitious buds. These buds usually remain dormant when the leaf is attached with the plant. However, when the leaves come in contact with the soil, develops new plantlets along the margins. However, in some species of biophyllum, plantlets develop along the margins of the intact leaves. In begonia and sansevieria, adventitious buds are produced at the place of injury. Cytokinins accumulating at the leaf margins to lead cell division in the notches to produce these adventitious shoots. Bulbils. These are actually fleshy buds produced in the axil of leaves in place of axillary buds. They grow to form new plants when shed and fall on the ground. For example, oxalis, ilium sativum, dioscoria, etc. In agava species, the floral buds are modified into bulbils which grow into new plants when shed from the mother plant. Another form is the turions. Turions are the special type of fleshy buds that are formed in aquatic plants, for example, Potomogeton, Utricularia for vegetative propagation. Tip layer method of vegetative propagation. Plant species like Robus indicus and blackberry plants can spread by having arching shoots that ultimately touch down onto the soil. The rubbing of the stem on the soil and horizontal position of the stem along the soil surface cause auxins to build up there. The auxins induce root formation. Now, the economic uses of natural method of vegetative propagation. There are several potential applications of this method such as only one parent is required which eliminates the need for special mechanisms such as pollination. It is cheaper way of propagation. In this method, high yield of varieties can be produced. It is faster and helps the organisms to increase in number at a rapid rate that balances the loss in number due to various causes. Many plants are able to tide over unfavorable conditions. This is because of the presence of organs of asexual reproduction like the tubers, combs, bulbs, etc. Vegetative propagation is especially beneficial to the agriculturists and horticulturists. They can raise crops that do not produce viable seeds. Now, it can be concluded that vegetative propagation by natural method is a very important method of propagation, which is without any human intervention. And plants can preserve their genome without undergoing sexual method of reproduction, which is often associated with genetic variability 
and can raise crops that do not produce viable seeds. With this, I take your leave. Thank you.